That's uh, the little intro for what the undergraduate program is. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about it again, it's actually the largest private scholarship for community college transfer students in the country. Um, just some numbers that I was looking for, in 2013, they gave 73 awards nationwide from 769 nominations because they used to work per nominations, so the actual college had to nominate all the um, applicants. Now they change it, so my year, I applied this year, 2014, it was actually per application, so they received almost 4,000 applications and they awarded 85 um, recipients, including me and another friend from here from Bergen. And also in 2015, which is last year, they also gave 90 awards um, from 2,000 applications. Uh, the foundation says that they expect to receive approximately 3,500 applications and to give, it, uh, to give the award to 85 approximately. Now the BCC recipients that we have again, in 2014 it was me and my friend Anna. In 2015, last year, well this year, it was Masha, also valedictorian, and uh, Natasha Pinheiro. She was involved with the student government. So apparently for next year, if your name is Maria, you have a better chance. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the next recipient is in this room. Who knows? And hopefully it's going to be two or three again. Now, eligibility pop quiz. So this is actually the first thing they're going to ask you when you go into the website. So when you log into the website, I'm going to show you all that. The first thing you're going to fail is an, um, an eligibility quiz. That is pretty much the first thing they have to do in order to complete the application because they want to make sure you have all this. So I just want to ask you guys if how many of you are actually eligible to apply for the applications. So first thing, I think you're all in, you all have the check in the first one, which is to be in an accredited community college, we're in Bergen, so perfect. To have a GPA of 3.5 or above on a 4.0 scale. So 3.5 or more is a requirement for this particular scholarship. Transferring to a four-year college in fall 2016. So if you're applying this year, which is the application is due on December 3rd, so if you're filling the application this year, um, you have to be transferred to a four-year school upon graduation. So that has to be one of your goals. Um, also, you have to demonstrate financial lead. Uh, we're going to talk about that as well. And you have not enrolled previously in a four-year institution. Okay, so how many of you think in this room that you're eligible for the application? I see a lot of hands. And I want you all to apply, especially if you're graduating the semester. And because I'm gonna, I know you, I'm going I'm to make sure that you all apply. You have a sheet here to fill with your name and email because I'm going to make sure that you apply before December 3rd. I'm going to pass this around, okay? Okay, this is exciting. All right, so first thing I'm going to tell you is a little bit about my particular story. Hello. Um, I grew up in this beautiful, beautiful city. It's called Caracas. It's in Venezuela. It's the capital. Um, I have a picture to share with you. This is a picture during my first day of classes, and this is a picture during my last day of classes. So this is in first grade and senior year. After my graduation, I realized that, well, Venezuela was a mess. We have a very, very um, intense social, economical, and political crisis in all senses in the country. To show you about that, I have some interesting facts. For example, the minimum salary in Venezuela is actually $32 per month. Um, another thing is that a person is murdered in Venezuela every 21 minutes. This makes Caracas, which is the beautiful city that I showed you before, the second most dangerous city in the world based on the murder uh, rate. Also, we have more than 100 political prisoners. And just um, an interesting fact as well is that an opposition leader, uh, his name is Leopoldo Lopez. He is a Venezuelan national leader who is a Harvard graduate and he is a political prisoner, and he has been sentenced to 14 years for his art of words, pretty much a Twitter inciting others for violence, according to the government, while we have a president that is actually a former bus driver who was turned into a vice president with no education. Um, some interesting headlines as well can be funny. For example, McDonald's French fries return to Venezuela, or the nightmare of grocery shopping in Venezuela or Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro says he will sue the US. Now, why am I telling you about all this? I'm telling you about all this because that's my story. So that's what makes me unique and that's my background and that's what has influenced me through everything that I'm doing today. 
And what I believe is that everyone in this room, we all have unique stories that make us also stand out. Maybe you're from another country, maybe you're a non-traditional student. So everything that you have makes you unique. So now what I'm here to tell you is that you have to take that story and tell it to the Jack Hens Cook Foundation. Now, what does it take to be a Cook Scholar? What does it take to be selected for this great um, scholarship? So according to their own website, they actually say that, or their motto is, think big, work hard, and achieve. What they're looking for is achievements and academic ability. They're also looking for financial need, persistence, leadership, and service to others. So I divided this into three different sections, which are think big, work hard, and achieve. Now, what does it mean to think big? And I'm going to ask you this, guys. What do you think it means for a student to think big? Who has an answer for that? Someone who has a goal, like they have a point to where they want to be, or who do they want to be? Perfect, yeah. So goals, right? That's one thing. What other thing do you think uh, it means to think big? To get accepted into a very, very good school. Okay, to get accepted. Very good. Another thing about getting accepted, I think, is also having the actual dream of going to a big school, right? So that's that's definitely thinking big. Um, I think it's exceeding like all of your personal expectations like of yourself. Like you have a person, everybody has like an expectation, but it's going above that and right. trying harder all the time. I really like that. And I, I also think that, let's say when, when I talk about like competition, for me competing against others is more mostly about competing against yourself and your own expectations. So exactly, that's all about thinking big. What about working hard? Right? So working hard is about, for me, what I have found during my time in Bergen and now in Stevens is that grades are good, having a 4.0 GPA is perfect, but besides from that, you need to get involved. So extracurriculars are a key, key thing in all these applications and just, you know, your academic and professional life. So the good thing here in Bergen is that we actually had great opportunities here on campus, including, of course, taking honors classes, uh, being part of Phi Theta Kappa, being a tutor, if you can, um, also get involved with as many clubs as you can and as you like. So the clubs that I was involved with during my time in Bergen were the STEM Student Union, which is a science club. I was also part of the math club. I was also a tutor, PTK, and honor. So the more the better in this case. And also, I know for a fact that the foundation is definitely looking for students that have service and volunteering opportunities. Finally, achieving. So achieving. Um, this is kind of like a tricky thing in the application because not everyone likes to kind of like the showing off of the application, like, yeah, I have this and I have this, but this is not a time to be modest, okay? If you can mention all the awards that you have and the different recognitions that you have and all the accomplishments, this is the application to do that, and every scholarship application, of course. Oops. Well, work hard and achieve. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to talk about the actual application process to do that. I'm actually going to log in in the website that you have to, you know, it's the same thing that you have to do. So the, the website is this website over there. It's jkcf.org. Okay, they have everything. All the information from today's presentation is actually here. Once you log in the website, you have to go to scholarships program. And then you click on undergraduate transfer. So you can just click there and it tells you everything there. It's a video that I showed you. Also, the selection process and criteria that I told you about. Minimum eligibility requirements, every, um, everything that you need to be eligible for the application, and other questions, right? So if you have other questions, you can go here. Okay, now the important thing is this big one here that says apply now. Okay, once you click on there, it's gonna take you to um, a login website. We all know how to do that, right? It's like registering, so you have to, um, pretty straightforward, you just have to put your email, and then it's gonna uh, take you to the application. The first thing that you're gonna get in the application is an eligibility quiz, so you just have to make sure you fill that. Once you do that, then you're gonna have an option like this that says undergraduate transfer scholarship, and you can just work on it like that, okay? so. Here, it's everything that you have to fill for the application, okay? As you notice, it's not an easy, short application. It's, I mean, again, it's the largest application uh, scholarship in the country, so it's gonna ask you for some time and effort in the actual application process. So you need parent information, recommendation requests, short answers and essays, activities, honors, um, 
your intended for your institution, academics, that's about grades, I think, self-assessments, and then just actually submitting. One thing that I want to show you is that in honors, no, in 